to do that. So, okay. So, welcoming back, I'm gonna turn the mic to Uncle Alfred. Okay, Uncle Alfred, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ma'i. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. We're really uh, happy to see you back. We hope you, ha hope you had a good intercession with the uh, peer mentors and had a chance to get some lunch, stretch a little bit, um, get your bearings back. We have a treat for you today. Um, and so let me get started. Um, I'm going to go off script here. I'm not going to read his bio because you can read that. So let me just tell you from, from my heart and from what I know and from others. I'm very happy to introduce our next speaker. He's someone I've known for many years and has been, been a strong advocate. Quote, my favorite memory of Sefa is when I was a freshman at UCLA. He worked in Asian American studies and would walk through the halls. Every time he passed the ASA lounge, he would always say hi, wave, nod his head. He always looked comfortable in his skin and it was like seeing my older brother on campus. That's uh, an end quote. That's from Professor Teresa Stewart Ambo, who is with us today. Another one is he is a big brother to the PI students, not afraid to tell them the real deal. He has a great sense of history of student empowerment from the PI perspective. He calls students out when necessary, but he does it with love. He's the founder of PISA and Peer at UCLA. One of my favorite memories was during Asian, Amer Asian Pacific Islander graduation when he joined the Samoan students dancing on the stage. Such joy in celebrating culture and heritage. Melissa Veluz Abraham. And she said to tell you she loves you. Another one was, I can't help it. And this is a quote from, from Sefa that someone heard. I can't help it, I was colonized. And that's from Santiago Bernal. <laughs> and then the last one was, this university was not meant for us. We were not meant to be here. Just take a look around. One of the ways they try to exclude us is by making these damn seats for skinny people. Now, how many of us fit comfortably in these seats? Mm -hmm. and, and they expect us to learn while holding our breath while we sit in them? Come on, and that's from me. <laughs> Once at UCLA, Safa became actively engaged in the struggle to create access for opportunities of Pacific Islander students in Inglewood, Carson, Compton, and Long Beach. I'm gonna uh, skip to his current role as Associate Dean and Director of the Draper Center for Community Partnerships at Pomona College. He is a founding member and current board chair of EPIC, Empowering Pacific Islander Communities, and many other boards. He's also founding member of NPIEN, National Pacific Islander Educators Network. In September 2010, Sefa was appointed by President Obama to the President's Advisory Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islander. He served as the vice chair of the commission from, 2000, from 2010 to 2014. So as you can see, he is a force, a power, and I'm honored to call him my friend, my brother. Please welcome Sefa Aina. Well, it's, it's all gonna be downhill after that, man. That was amazing, Alfred. Thank you, brother. Um, you know, game recognize game. Uh, if y'all don't know Alfred, y'all better Google him. My man is is legendary, and and it's good to be here with all these wonderful folks. Santi, I, I really got. <laughs> I, I guess I, I'm I'm a quotable person. Uh, all the things I've said in the past, but y'all know it's true. Them chairs are not meant for us. We cannot sit. <laughs> oh yes, a curse as, and a blessing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They don't want all this voluptuousness to be in the classroom. It might distract, it might distract the holy kids, you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, yeah, but how do you, oh man, thank you so much, Alfred. Hey, that means so much, um, you know, coming from a friend, uh, an ally, and a mentor. Um, wow, 25 years, that is a long time, brother. Um, but uh, I, 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 I find strength in the work. I find strength in, in, in spaces like this. Um, I appreciate y'all. I see a lot of our, our young uh, uh, folks here, piece of folks and other folks. Uh, shout out to y'all. 
Uh, thank you for, for making the, the dreams that we dreamt of once upon a time a continued reality uh, because it's your, your, the work that manifests through you all that kind of lets us know that, you know what, we, we were onto something. Um, you know, it was more than a feeling. It was, it was, a, it was about um, change. And, and so we appreciate, I appreciate y'all for continuing this work. Um, I'm going to share uh, um, my screen. Um, let me see. Okay. Can folks see that? Yeah, that's my mom's village. Folks yes. see that? Okay. Um, how do I pin myself? Is it is it possible to pin myself? Uh, let me see. Okay. I'll put me in there too. So I'm gonna be right here. This is my mom's house. Can folks still see this? Can you see me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I mean, I, 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 I have to be honest I today in, um, these, uh, last few days, you know, especially with the verdict, uh, the Breonna Taylor uh, murder, um, it's tough, it's tough. Um, I, I don't know what else to say, you know, it, it chips away at your belief. Um, and one of the reasons why I feel like I've been able to stay in this, in this game for so long is because I, I, I'm a person who has a lot of belief. Uh, and I still believe, but it's hard. It's harder and harder to keep that belief when um, when things like this are, are constant. Um, they're not aberrations. They're they're the actual constant. And uh, it's sad that we're living in a time like this. Um, but I, but I hope and and what I what I get from from being invited to MPI site is that. Uh, you know, it's a group of people who, who have belief in, in, in many things. And, and one thing for sure is that education can transform you, whether that's transforming your ability to, um, you know, be able to make a, a living for your family, because uh, it certainly can do that, but also a belief in, in, in that, you know, you can transform and you can change uh, not only yourself, but your community and hopefully society. So. What I titled this uh, talk was, um, it's, a, it's a Maori proverb and I'm not Maori, I am Samoan, but I feel like it's, it's something that a lot of indigenous cultures I feel um, talk about and think about. Uh, it's a nod to our past, it's a nod to our elders, it's a nod to the wisdom that they've bestowed and that they've left behind. Ka mura ka muri, walking backwards into the future. And that has, that takes on many many meanings, right? Um, one potential uh, uh, thought about that is, is you know, if, if you're familiar with um, Paulo Freire's uh, definition of, of praxis and, you know, on your college journey, if you haven't read it already, you, you probably will soon in uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, he defines praxis as reflection and action directed at the structures to be transformed. Through praxis, oppressed people can acquire and a critical awareness of their own condition and with teacher students and student teachers struggle for liberation. And so in some ways, this is, this is about that. It's about reflecting. What are we reflecting on? You know, what, what, what is that? Uh, what are those experiences? Those ones that both you had personally yourself and those that were passed on to you, whether it's a, a transference of trauma from generation to generation, you know, somebody <laughs> said that quote I always say, you know, hey, if I do some some wild shit, it's, you know, don't blame me, man. I was colonized. It happened before I was born. You know, it's it's that. Um, that's true because trauma does kind of move from generation to generation. And, and, and to break cycles is, is, it takes a lot of concentration. It takes a lot of uh, commitment. And, and it also takes a lot of reflection, right? Because what are you actually trying to, to address? The other thing, you know, uh, when I think about, um, Kamura i Kamuri is, is context, perspective, and reflection, right? So what is the context by which I, I arrive here today, 
you know, how does that inform my perspective? And how do I reflect on that past, on my past per, uh, personally? And for me, I think that piece, that reflection piece, uh, did did as much for me with regards to um, education, what I got from my education at UCLA and beyond and, and continued through, you know, my constant interactions with young folks and activists and folks like that. Um, that constant uh, uh, learning and, and reflection uh, helps to build sort of a, a context for me to to reflect and to uh, build upon, right? So understanding um, how structures work, understanding how I work within structures, understanding how I either um, am complicit or uh, implied, implicit in, in, in some of these uh, inequalities that, that many people, um, many people still, still experience. And so part of this, you know, reflection, this kamurai kamuri is, is the ability is in, 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 in sort of putting an educational lens on it, especially uh, for you young folks who are on your journey to become, you know, quote unquote educated. Um, that you guys, that one of the biggest or the best use, one of the most utilitarian uses of this education is to be able to contextualize who you are, where you come from, and why things are the way they are. And that, that was a personal journey for me in college and it still is to a large extent a personal journey for me. Uh, but in speaking of my journey, this is where it starts. Um, my name is Sefa Aina, I'm calling you from um, a city called Menifee, California. Um, the river that I'm near is the um, Santa Ana River. The mountains at my back are the San Jacinto Mountains. Um, and I know those aren't the indigenous names for those spaces, but I do want to call that out as, as a place of, uh, as a point of giving context to where I'm located and where I'm being hosted. Um, my ocean is the Pacific Ocean, the Moana, uh, Oceania, uh, that connects this land to my ancestral home, which is Samoa, which is where, um, at least for me, in terms of my reflection, a lot of it started here. This is my mom's village in uh, American Samoa. Uh, it's the village of Awa on the island of Tutuila in the territory known as American Samoa. This is uh, my mom's, well, this is our family's home in, in the village of Awa. Um, this is my father's home uh, in the village of Fiti Uta on the island of Manua, also part of the, uh, what, what's known as uh, American Samoa. And so, you know, I, I acknowledge, you know, my, my own um, upbringing. Uh, you know, um, they say, you know, which means, you know, the person who speaks is not more important than the people who are uh, upholding them or who are praying for them or who have given them blessings. And that's been true in my life is that so when you hear me speak, you know, you hear my parents speak, you hear my grandparents speak, you hear my ancestors speak. And, you know, one of the, one of the things I find comfort in is that even though um, there are moments when you feel alone and, and education being one of those really, really big moments where you, you feel alone, I, I, I felt that especially you know, when I first got to UCLA, it really is about sort of um, understanding, you know, the context of how we see ourselves um, within you know the spectrum of time right we're not ever alone we're part of a, a genealogy and my genealogy is always with me whether i'm uh in westwood or back home in samoa it's just who i am and where i am so uh once you once you get to realize that and know that and you carry these things with you you know then you know your swag is a little different you know you walk with a little more you know pet you know what i mean and and at least that's, that's what it was like for me. And so understanding that I was never alone, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a weird thing because people don't understand that on a campus like UCLA, and, and I know maybe not all of you are gonna end up at UCLA, but in, in most college campuses, when you're surrounded by so much and so many people, sometimes people don't understand how you can feel so lonely and so out of place, you know, right? Because there's all kinds of beautiful things around that 
um, tell you that, you know, you should be happy. And, but if, if you don't feel like you're being welcomed properly, if you don't feel like you belong, or if you don't feel like, or if you feel like you're a guest and, you know, you should be quote unquote grateful to, to, to have a spot, um, you're always going to feel out of place. So um, it was important for me to kind of reach back into my own history and my own way of knowing uh, who I am. And that, again, is something that I learned at UCLA so that my my actual beginnings are here. But where coming into UCLA, I, this is where I thought my beginnings were. Uh, I grew up in the place, uh, I grew up south, uh, the 619 San Diego, California. And, uh, you know, I think like most people, um, I think a public persona of, of a place like San Diego is very, um, it's very vanilla. Uh, it's a uh, place that, um, in Comic-Con, it's got this, this is the Hotel Del Coronado, you know, it's, it had a, a it has a bunch of a different markers there that I think, um, you know, I, I feel like whiteness is, is, is abound there. I mean, it's like, you know, it's also a border town. It's also a military town. And so politically, it's also very backwards and very, very conservative. And so, but you know, you, when you and when you grow up in a place like that, you learn to you know there's this chill vibe in San Diego where that like, God, you know, get over it, we'll be fine, let's go surf, you know what I mean? So there's there was never really any sense of urgency for me growing up because San Diego was a chill place, and you know, but that's this isn't the San Diego by any means. This isn't the San Diego I grew up in. This is the San Diego I grew up in. Um, I grew up in a section of San Diego called Southeast San Diego predominantly African-American and I went to school in a part of San Diego that uh, is predominantly Mexican, uh, Latinx, um, predominantly Mexican and um, that's this is what it was for me you know and and even though I knew that these other places existed you know this is how I see and how I forever will see uh, um, my my experience in San Diego and not that I, I mean I, I love I loved, you know, growing up in San Diego. I love, you know, I, I have mad, mad love for, for my upbringing and where I'm from and the, even this perspective, because I think this art is beautiful. I grew up seeing um, the uh, freeways at Chicano Park and the pillars and the Aztec murals. And you know what I mean? I, I grew up where, where folks were always practicing, you know, uh, old English writing in class, you know, just in case, you know, you got your skills up and you can, you know, tag on something. Uh, it was just always there, and so, but it, it didn't it didn't lean itself or lend itself to, I would say, uh, uh, proactive consciousness building, and I think most uh, income uh, low income communities are that way. I grew up in this section of San Diego called Southeast San Diego. This is this is the the region that I'm from. This is sort of the back. This is what it looks like the back of my house. You know, this is my view of. of San Diego, very different from, you know, the other places. But this is what gives me, this is what gave me context. This is where I get, I got sort of my, my uh, understanding of the world of things. Um, I, uh, I grew, I grew up in this in this area called um, Southeast San Diego, and. You know, it wasn't uncommon to, you know, hear the ghetto bird or hear gunshots or hear, you know, uh, sirens or hear fighting or hear, you know, just just all those things that you hear, right? And so, um, the one thing that I, I realize is that, you know, when you when you grow up in a place like that and you grow up in an environment like that, you start to normalize those things and those things become. You know, just like if you grew up in the mountains and you hear squirrels and birds and shit like that, it's like, oh, that's some normal stuff, you know. But that, honestly, like when I hear birds and I, it kind of freaks me out, you know. I'm like, what the hell is that, you know? And, uh, nature's kind of, you know, it's it's part of my colonization, you know. It was beaten out of me uh, at a very young age, so I can't, I can't, I can't blame myself for that. Um, but I grew up here, and this this tended to color my um, my upbringing. But going from here, um, I ended up, oh, this is another 
sort of landmark in, in the city that I grew up from. If, is it, if anyone is from San Diego, you got to know where this is at. You know what I mean? This is one of those uh, old school like GPS um, points on the map. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, it's um, it's one of those things you got to see like Comic Con and Hotel Del Coronado and Green Cat Liquor. Uh, you know, you could usually test people's hood credentials if, he, if they knew where this was, you know what I mean? And uh, and we all have places like this, you know, in, in our cities. But I grew I grew up in, like I said, Southeast San Diego, but I went to school in this place called National City, where, you know, we gave it this funny name called Nasty City. Uh, like everybody comes from one of those kinds of places, right? And again, this is about context. This is how I grew up. This is where I grew up. And this is uh, also, you know, for me, you know, growing up in, in, in a predominantly black community and then, you know, uh, going to school in a predominantly Mexican community, you know, I think for me, it, it was the best, it was the best of, of both worlds because, you know, I, 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 I demystified and uh, any bullshit you hear on T or on television or the radio, or you just know, you just know they're lying. You know what I mean? You just know. And then you see, you know, the candy lady in my uh, community was was a Mexican lady who would sell burritos for 25 cents. You know, she'd, she'd bring you in and she had beans cooking all day, you know, and it was the best, you know what I mean? Uh, it was, you know, my best friend, uh, Guillermo, his mom would make us food from scratch. You know, no one wanted us in their house except for this lady. She was like <laughs> the best, you know, she would always make sopes for our birthdays because that's what we love the best. and. And it was like that, and, you know, that was my community. That's how I grew up. So the perspective was weird because on the one hand, you know, you had, you know, this, the, 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 the kind of telltale signs that you see in many urban communities, you have um, violence and gangs and things like that, but you also had that kind of generosity and that love. This is my friend. Well, he was sort of the, the first kid that I got to know in school when I went to formal school, OMB gay, native kid. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys can tell, like, where this picture is taken. You know, my man was, I think he's out now, but he was locked up for, for quite a bit of time. And, you know, that was my, that was the guy I grew up with. You know, the, the, the first dude whose house I went to where he wasn't my relative, you know, and, and um, was able to just see him grow, see myself grow. And then not really until, you know, much, much later when I sort of got an appreciation of, of, um, of of different communities and different peoples. Like I always thought, you know, back growing up, every, every, every Asian was Filipino and every, uh, every person who was Latinx or Latinx pre presenting was Mexican. So like, I, I you know, I, I didn't really acknowledge his native identity, you know, although in his, in his house, his mom had this wonderful thing. It's like, she was, she was making, um, she was making uh, the the blankets, you know, and she was she had this like weaving thing in her house. It was right there. I always thought it was it almost looked like just like a piece of art, but it was like she was constantly working on this thing. And I was like, just you know, just flies over your head because you just don't think about those things um, until you get uh, until at least until I got a level of consciousness where I could appreciate things on a much deeper level. Um, this is my man, uh, my cousin, you know, it's like a church cousin, you know, we have, we all have those people who were like, they're not blood cousins, but they, you know, you grew up with them. And so I'm like your cousins and brothers and, you know, this is us and, you know, we're both the same age and, you know, he still, he still lives that life. And so I realized that, you know, my, my, you know, all the things that Alfred talked about and all the things that, you know, I, I, I get uh, acknowledged for, um, it didn't have to be that way. It could have easily gone the other way. You know what I mean? When you're surrounded by the kinds of things that I was surrounded by, when you're um, really, really close to the people that I was close to, um, it could have gone another way, you know? And, and so um, I say that to, to say that, um, put into perspective that, you know what? There, there, there's a reason, there's a purpose that we're all here, right? Um, here meaning like, on this earth, but also here on this particular Zoom session, right? Like, what are, what are we doing here? We're meant to be in the same space. We're meant to share space with each other. We're meant to feel community with one another. And so, um, 
this is my mom. Um, my mom is this one on the left. This is an old, old picture of her, but you know, my mom's was like, you know, pretty, uh, she was a cultural OG. She, she wore mumus and her hair up in the fapaku all the time. And that's kind of how she, she rolled. And, you know, you couldn't tell her nothing, you know, and she was always just proud of who she was, even though there were moments where I felt like, man, you know, can, can you put on some, <laughs> some pants or, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, but this is a this is about growing up in the seventies and eighties where, you know, the 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 idea of a melting pot and assimilation was so like rammed down your throat that you it was so normalized that, you know, students of color, you know, started to internalize that. And so anything that was different or made you stand out was like, what the hell? You know what I mean? And 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 you know, I I I'm grateful that it's not exactly like that anymore, although I I, I do know that there's still an element of that uh, that exists, uh, maybe a little less overtly, but it still exists. But back then you were just like, you know, you don't want to be called a fob or, you know, I don't know if folks know what fobs are. Fobs are fresh off the boat, you know, and, you know, the last thing you want to do is get clowned on, you know what I mean? And so you, you, the, the interesting thing about all this is that, um, it was actually me who was, was you know, even though I felt like I was sort of a representation of a Samoan person, like I was the one carrying shame and you know hate and things like that because, you know, I, I was I was ashamed of that and it's like this is who she is, this is who we are, you know, this is this is how she dresses and this is what we eat, you know what I mean? And um, we, uh, you know, schools is cruel as hell, you know what I mean? Like you can't come come to school with this in your lunchbox. You know, because even though everybody there was poor and on free lunch, you know, someone was going to clown and someone was going to say shit about your food. And, and so, but it was like, part of this was, again, context, right? So I'm, I'm not only growing up in, in what you would call the hood, but I'm also growing up in a very cultural, you know, Samoan way, you know what I mean? And so, you know, um, so there was that term one, uh, a few years back called ghetto fabulous. People were ghetto fabulous, but we were ghetto fabulous. You know what I mean? We were kind of a mix of, of, of ghetto, but it was a little, you know, even the ghetto homies were like, what the hell is that on your foot? You know what I mean? And it's one thing when, when, the, when the free lunch homies start clowning, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, <laughs> you can't win nowhere, you know? And so, um, but this is, again, I, I, I bring all this up to provide context for myself, and 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 in the hope that I also that it also resonates with a lot of uh, folks here on the line, because I think it's it's an interesting thing to to see people like Alfred or myself or Santi or and any of the other speakers that you saw. You, you're seeing you're seeing us 25 years later, or 40 or 30 years later, or you know way later. Like, and and. Man, thank God there was no social media back then because you can't see no videos. There won't be no, there was no cameras. You know what I mean? That's it. I, I saw a picture of Alfred uh, on online. You threw up one from the 70s. I was like, damn, <laughs> looking clean, brother, looking clean. But you just won't find that. You know what I mean? And so thankfully, we got to play out all our, our dysfunctions uh, uh, off the radar, you know, whereas y'all are. This generation, well, everything, people are sloppy as hell, you know what I mean? Stop being messy, y'all. Keep that shit off, off, off the internet. Um, but, you know, this was, this, I was grateful that, that I had the upbringing that I had because it gave me perspective and context. This is who, this is what made me. And in spite of, of all of that, you know, the, the, the lucky thing for me, and this is probably true for some of you all out there, is that I, I tested well, well enough so that some teacher, usually a white teacher, usually a white woman, you know, made you their pet and said, oh, you're special, you're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the good one, you know, and, and you know, and I, and I don't say that to, to trivialize that, because I, I, I was blessed, obviously, to be, be uh, pointed to or tapped on the shoulder or, or whatever, but uh, usually you kind of, that, so that's the difference, right, between myself and someone who was just as smart, who was just as talented, uh, maybe not as good looking, but you know, <laughs> I got a few yes a lot. But um, 
but but didn't didn't get the chance. I mean, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen this or, or you've experienced this, but like I have I have relatives and friends back in in the hood who you can play cards with them and they're like they read every card, you, you know what I mean? Like it's like oh throw that down. And I'm like, how do you know this? That when you're playing dominoes with them, that they know exactly what you got in your hands. You're like, dude, are you a mathematician? Like, how the hell do you know that? You know what I mean? Like that there I also have the cousin who if he if he listens to something musically he can play it and he has had no formal training and it's just like Jesus Christ so like what makes me special what what how did I get out you know what I mean it, it starts to really put perspective on geez how just lucky you are to <laughs> to not get caught up in in a cycle of poverty right because those who don't, and, and they have these innate feelings of injustice, they have these innate feelings that something is not right. Those people end up trying to find solutions through through other ways, right? They, they medicate themselves. They medicate themselves at places, you know, like, like Green Cat Liquor, you know what I mean? Like this is where they find their medicine, right? They try to deal with the inner demons. They try to deal with the frustration by, uh, with, with, with stuff to just help them get past it. You know what I mean? And so um, what's the difference? Again, it's, it's, it's a, it's education for me was, was such a humbling experience. It was like, shit, man, what you think, you know, you don't know, you know what I mean? And, and in some ways that was cool. Uh, in other ways it's scary. Um, but always, always, always uh, uh, it made, makes you feel alive. Like, you know, cause if you know the answer to everything, if you've reached, ultimate sort of uh, enlightenment, then, you know, what, what else is there to do? You should just, you know, die or something, you know what I mean? But if, you, if you're always feeling that journey like that, like, man, I, get, I can learn some shit, you know what I mean? And honestly, and, and maybe this is true for Alfred and Santi, but I know it's true for me, young people are always teaching you things, you know, they're like, there's so much defiance and so much optimism and so much, you know, it's just like, well, shit, I don't know if it'll work. Let's see what happens, you know, and occasionally it does work. And, you know, and sometimes it was like, I told you that wasn't going to work. You know what I mean? But uh, occasionally it works and, and and you're just forever inspired by that. And so it's always going to be a two-way street. And I think that's also something I want I want to translate to to this group is that um, it's going to be a two-way street, you know, and there's this idea of, of capital, of cultural capital, um, that's defined in, in educational terms as, you know, um, having a, a certain background where, you know, that, that can help you um, excel in society, you know, whether it's a, a, your parents went to college or, and, you know, they kind of can show you the ropes or you, you're a legacy child or your uncle is like a business owner and you can get an internship. And so there's a level of capital that, that certain kids come into college with and, you know, as first gen, low income, um, you know, uh, black, indigenous people of color, you don't, you know, traditionally don't come into college with that traditional sense of cultural capital, but we come with something, you know what I mean? And that's the thing, right? And that's, a, that's, that's the always sort of the, and, and it took me years to realize that I actually came with quite a bit. Now, this was my actual first detour after high school, I went to this place um, to play football. And um, it was whack. Um, but I was trying to make my parents happy. Um, the military, US military has a very interesting role in, in colonizing the islands. And the US Navy in particular um, oversaw the, the management of American Samoa. And so, um, Growing up in American Samoa, my parents were like, this was like the pinnacle of society, of American society, because the governor at the time was appointed and they were always a, this US, this uh, admiral, this naval admiral who wore a white uniform. And the reason why I'm describing it in such details because my mom would tell me that. She's like, oh, my son's gonna wear a white uniform. And, and I'm just like, okay, whatever. You know, I grew up in San Diego. I grew up in the U.S., so I was like, I wasn't like thinking anything like the U U military was better than anything else, but that's how she grew up. That was her coming of age, and so, you know, trying to make my parents happy, I went, and it was whack, and so um, I tried to, I dropped out, and uh, and so I, I also bring that up to say that, you know, um, 
folks can see sort of a finished product and see where we've gone. But, you know, you know, I just, I just you, you're going to try some things and not be successful at some things. And the, the, the ultimate sort of, I guess, the, the lesson learned is that you got to keep going, got to keep pushing. Um, so I went there, didn't work out. So then I came home and then I went to this place, uh, UCLA, uh, very, very proud of, of, of being uh, from there. But when I, when I say UCLA, you know, obviously uh, there's a lot of things to like about it and there's a lot of things to dislike about it. Um, but when I say UCLA, I don't, I, I don't mean all of it. You know what I mean? There's obviously not some parts that I didn't like, um, but there are some people there that I met there that were they're my, they're, you know, from, from then on, they're just my, they're my folks. You know, they, I met uh, other, um, I became a Pacific Islander. I became indigenous there uh, because when I, when I, when I showed up there, I was just Samoan, you know, I was Samoan, I was Samoan American because I, you know, I felt like I was the ultimate crossover and that, you know, look at me, you know, I was like, it was a horrible, it was, it was such a self-hating sort of fake uh, nationalism that was just so rooted in some backward shit that I, I cringe when I think about it. But, um, you know, I came to this place and, and I, it really started to frame things for me. Uh, one, one particular incident um, in the fall of 19, 1992, um, I remember right in front of here, right in front of uh, Royce Hall, um, there was, uh, I was way down on the other side by the, the uh, law school and um, I could hear uh, drumming, you know, native drumming uh, off off in the distance. I don't wanna sound like a, this is some freaking Moana story, but it was off in the distance. Um, it was up the street a little bit and, and you know, I was thinking, oh, cool. You know, it's, it's probably Columbus day. You know what I mean? Cause I grew up in San Diego, man. And they never missed an opportunity to make you feel you know, like white men ruled everything, you know what I mean? And so we were always doing the, the pilgrim shit, you know, making little cornucopia, little that things growing up and, you know, making turkeys and stuff like that. And so I was like ingrained with that knowledge. And so coming to college, it was like a given, it's like, it was like Christmas. Oh shit, it's Columbus day. And so I'm, I'm far enough away where I don't really see what's going on, but as I walk towards there, I, I get closer to the quad. I cross the street by the flagpole and I start walking. And then right there you start, it was sort of a living history of, of uh, genocide and, and Native, uh, Native American history with uh, Christopher Columbus. And so there were these, uh, these mock tombstones that had different sort of uh, demographics on there, the population size at, uh, in contact, and then, you know, five years later, 10 years later, so on and so forth. And as you walk through this maze, you know, there's, there's fake blood everywhere. And it's like, it's, it's definitely meant to, to kind of jar you into like, whoa, you know, and, and, and for me, it was like, you know, this was before, you know, I, I people got to read like uh, a people's history of, you know, the, no one was reading Howard Zinn um, back then, you know what I mean? It was like, it was not allowed in, in high school, you know, you had to wait to get to college to, to, to get that. And so, I, I remember standing there though, thinking like, dang, this makes more sense than anything I've ever been told in my life. Um, that although um, this is, uh, and here I go, I'm back on the screen. Although I am, um, I, I've never been taught this, you know, and you know, my, I took AP history, US history, and I had never been taught this, but this felt like the realest thing I've ever, been exposed to this felt right this felt true right the narrative doesn't start with you know 1492 sailing the ocean blue the narrative starts with genocide with you killing people you know the nation the narrative of this country begins with murder and so what i realized then is that you know i don't know what i don't what i don't know i i, I if i didn't know this then what else do i not know what else do i need to to relearn or um find out about right and so this was definitely one of those moments where it was like um an aha moment you know it was a, a realization moment for me um but you know I, I come from san diego you know if you remember the context and 
also then, you know, being coming from that area from Green Cat to, you know, jolly ass Westwood, you know what I mean? Like, I don't got to tell you all what it's like. It's like this, you know, it's like um, that, you know what I mean? And for some reason, you know, everybody's so happy all the time. And, you know, it's like uh, it's a lot of white folks, you know, and it's the first time I've been around so many, so many. And so it was just like, again, it was, it was a, a sort of a crashing of two worlds, right? It was sort of uh, how I was raised, where I was raised, and then sort of being thrusted into to this place, you know, where, you know, it always felt like, you know, your life was like one broche, big ass brochure, you know, where everybody was supposed to be happy, you know, rock the gear and, you know, go to the football games and things like that. Um, and you just try to fit in, you just try to, you know, make a space for yourself, you try to, uh, you know, fake it till you make it, right? And so, you know, college was a trip coming from where I came from to this, you, you start to see water fountains like Royce Hall, and then you, you walk down Bruin Walk, and everything is so orderly, and everyone seems to be having a good time. And then, you know, I see, you see these, right, squirrels. And, um, you know, I'm a city dude. And, and for me, you know, um, it's a wild animal. Whoops. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, tripping on this, right. And, you know, maybe that's just me, but it, it always tripped me out, the, the, the squirrels. And then the other things would trip me out, like the sculpture garden, you know what I mean? And folks would be like, uh, <laughs> you know, this is supposed to be art, you know what I mean? And, and, and you're trying to be like, yo, this, these people are naked, you know what I mean? Like, what, why is this art? Who did it? You know what I mean? And, and there's a really interesting story that I, I, I remember from sitting in this garden. I was with my wife, well, my girlfriend, who's my wife now, um, and we were, uh, sitting there and this dude walks by and we catch eyes, you know, and, um, and, and we look at each other and, and I, I look at him and I just start mad dogging, you know, and, um, you know, immediately he looks away, you know what I mean? And cause he doesn't know what we're doing. I don't, I, I, I do that because of where I'm from. It's like somebody look at you, you look at him back, like what you looking at, you know what I mean? And, and I remember my, my wife telling me like, dude, what is your problem, man? stop tripping like these people do not even want to stare at you like that you know and you know then I realized you start to realize like regardless of where I am regardless of the squirrels and the fountains and the statues and all that stuff I am who I am I, I am where I'm from where I grew up that's why I have all these messed up notions of my identity in my head you know what I mean that's why I I was ashamed of you know my my Samoan culture that you know my mom would probably display I was this is why I was the way I was you know and so it was it was a very another one of those awakening moments for me like East LA was a trip you know it wasn't so much what I learned in the classroom because I can barely remember the shit I learned in the classroom but uh, it was it was just everything it was it was taking it all in uh and 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 being out and and, and learning about life and experiencing life obviously school too but um for for sure for sure it was like a lot of this was like reflection you know like who am i what am i doing here and and how can i uh how can i um oops and how can i you know make sense of this uh you know so i i, I bring i talk about this because you know i, I want to talk about perspective you know i want to talk about uh how we build our perspective and how we build our um our knowledge um, and what we build that upon. Um, growing up the way I grew up, and 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 if I can, if I may say this and assume this, that many of you grew up in very similar ways. Um, what I did know growing up is that I had to be tough. I had to be resilient. I had to, you know, um, be stronger than the next person. I had to, you know, uh, not not accept, you know, defeat. I had to, I had to be tough. I had to, you know, emotionally be emotionally more mature than most people. I had to, I had to do it on my own. Not, not, not that my parents didn't want, want to support me or anything like that. It was always support, but you know, financially I, I would get my refund check and send that home, you know, and 
you know, folks would be like, man, what are you doing? And I was like, man, my family needs this more than me. You know what I mean? And, you know, I always felt guilty being in school. I felt guilty being in college, you know, like I should be at home struggling with my folks, you know, but um, it was, it was just the context that I, I came from that I, then I start to realize like, you know, that's, that's not a deficit. That shit is a strength. You know what I mean? Anyone can do this shit, you know, when people are paying your bills and, you know, feeding you all the time and putting clothes on your back and whatever. I, I don't trivialize that. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure not anyone, but you know, it, it would have been easier for me, but it, it wasn't about like being jealous or being hateful and all this other stuff. It was just like, I'm stronger than y'all. You know what I mean? I, I can, I could do this. Y'all don't know me. You know what I mean? Real, you know, uh, Alfred said, you know, he's a warrior. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, it's all peace and love, but I, that's how, that's my mentality. You know what I mean? I, I feel like, yes, it's a war, you know, and I'm a warrior and that's what we do. I suit up, I'm ready. You know, and I'm ready for this. You know what I mean? I'm built for this. And so that comes from growing up the way I grew up. That's my cultural capital. And, I, and, and, and this is a sort of a long roundabout way for me to tell you that um, you come to school with something. You know what I mean? No one's showing up here with nothing, right? And those are the things you got to build on. That book knowledge, that's going to come. I mean, you, you're smart enough, you know, to get into the places you got into because admissions is such a, 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 a strainer and and we we think weeding it out that, that you know there's no mistakes. So if you're not successful at the place you're going to, I would check your environment. You figure out what is going on in your environment that is not helping you be successful, because academically you've proven yourself to be worthy of being there. So the other thing that I want to I want to say, uh, the other thing that I I um, did in college um, to help me feel normal was that I did a lot of community work. I, uh, I went to Carson in Long Beach and in Inglewood um, and I did work at the high schools and you know, with, 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 my, with my folks, you know, my, my, uh, my peers. Um, and you, know, you felt normal and, and you felt like, you know, there's, there's this thing called the imposter syndrome in, in, in higher ed and I think in general. And, and a lot of that, you know, that people get and feel like you feel it through the stares and the looks, right? Because no one's ever going to come up and ask you unless they're just a complete dirt bag. No one's going to come up and ask you or tell you, you don't belong here. You know, you're not smart enough. Like, how did you get in here? But you know, that's kind of what they're feeling. And even if you don't, even if they're not feeling that, like that's your perception of how they feel about you. And that's not something you can easily shake. And so when you're in a place like UCLA and you're surrounded by those kinds of eyes 24 seven, you know, that stuff will tear away at your soul. You know what I mean? So you need to go out into the community so that the eyes that rest upon you are loving eyes, are eyes that respect who you are, that look at you and say, damn, you got to UCLA? The hell, you know, we could do that. You know what I mean? And so, it's 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 an amazing thing that 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 but it's so you know the in in, in our Pacific Islander cultures you know the maka the matza is very very key to the windows to to one's uh, person you know who you are a lot of that is read through your eyes and you know it's no no wonder why you know students of color uh, marginalized students aren't doing as well as they could be in these places because the eyes that rest upon them aren't always loving eyes, aren't always friendly eyes, aren't always believing eyes, you know, but when you get onto your community and they show you their, their eyes and they show you love and you're like, shit, man, this is what keeps me going. So it wasn't until I did that that I realized that I'm not doing this for, to show out for the people at UCLA, for the professors, for the other students. I'm doing this because my community needs me to do this. They need to look at somebody. You know what I mean? And I need to look at them. And so when you have that, it, it's gas. And, I, and I'm addicted to that, you know? And so I'm a big believer in, in, in finding those eyes that love you, that love what you do, that love who you are and put yourself in those positions because that's always gonna be important. That's gonna help you get through those other times when you don't have those kind of people. And so one of the things I did know, learn and 
this is, I think, is an indigenous thing. This is a, you know, a cultural thing. Is that, you know, we, we are learning in, in terms of, uh, you know, some people conflate literacy with knowledge and wisdom and education. And, you know, coming from an, uh, a, community, a culture that has a long oral tradition, we know that's not true. And we've navigated, you know, across the whole Pacific and, you know, when we didn't have like a, you know, I was going to say a Thomas guy, but only Alfred and Santi probably know what a Thomas guy is. But uh, yeah. we didn't have any, you know, those machines, you know, and, you know, but did, we did the damn thing. You know what I mean? We knew what we were doing. And it was, it was sort of a learning through intuition. It was a learning to be with the, 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 the environment and not, you know, trying to manipulate the environment. It was, it was a different approach to the world that, that I think, uh, is ingrained in our DNA, you know, and so doing this is how you learn. And so for me, it wasn't just learning wasn't just relegated to the classroom, right? Because they that's where there seems to be the overemphasis on the, the knowledge you're going to get is, is what you learn in the classroom. Yes, you're going to get some there, but really, like, you have to complement that with the knowledge of doing things, right? There's a Hawaiian uh, proverb that goes, Hanai Kalima means understanding the balance between thinking and doing and that learning and doing. And again, going back to Kamura Ikamuri, uh, Freire's idea of praxis, you learn through doing, you learn through reflection, right? And so how do you, how do you uh, honor that? How do you honor those traditional ways of knowledge, but also, you know, get the things you also need to, to know from the classroom room, right? You, you know, uh, I, I say, you know, we, we don't need to um, westernize in order to modernize, but you know, we, we can we can tool up we can learn from from the new technology we can learn from other communities uh, at, but at the core of it you have to believe in who you are and believe that you do come of, uh, from a place where people already need and they have a different way of knowing and then and then you have to believe in that you have to believe in the the, the transformative power of education you know and one one last thing I'll share is that in in in, um, in the Samoan culture, Education is, um, well, uh, uh, in the Samoan culture, we have these things called falala Um I'm going to stop sharing right now. Um, we have these things called falala And, uh, you know, they're basically like, it's a, it's like a, well, I think if you literally translate, it's like a burden or, or you know, it's like a, it's, it's something that's, you know, like strenuous to your family, you know, whether it's like a, a, a death or a funeral, a funeral or, or, or a wedding or, or, you know, something that's going to cost a lot. It's going to take a lot of you know, family coming together. And, and, and you know, it, it obviously involves money. It all be, obviously involves uh, a lot of, um, you know, resources. And so, Many of our families here, you know, just because of, of you know, the history and the marginalization of our communities, um, that, that, those fat lavaladas can break you. You know, they, they, can, they can mean the difference between, you know, paying your, your light bill or paying your rent or, or being true to your family or quote unquote true to your family. And, you know, and a lot of people are turned off by that. A lot of people are are uh, frustrated by that and you know you start hearing you know people bashing like oh i don't even know these people and you know and why do we do things like this and all that. and you know my thing is like it's not it's not about the fall out of love it's not about our culture because coming together to support each other is beautiful right like who else does that what what we're really talking about here is you're not ready you're not ready you're not ready to help your family you know what i mean and and education is one of those ways in which you get ready to help your family. So becoming educated is not about, not just about improving your, your uh, marketability. It's about saving our culture. It's about saving our practices. Because if, if you can't afford to, to stay up with your community, if you can't afford to participate, you're going to start blaming your culture for not being able to do that. You know, and, and really, when you think about it, like all that, the beauty of it, you know, of course, you know, people practice it in different ways and people will bastardize, you know, their interpretations of culture uh, to fit whatever they feel is true or whatever. 
but but at, at the core of it, at the core of the idea, it's beautiful coming together to support your family, right? The question is, are you ready? Are you ready to do that? That's the thing. And, and school is one of those things. That's why I tell people, man, it's not, you know, you can become an investment banker if you want to, you know, you can become a school teacher or a union organizer or whatever. But really what you'll, what you'll always be, what you will always be is part of this family, is part of this culture, is part of this community. And so you have to think about it in that way. What you're doing is, is, is if, if, you're not, if you're not finding a motivation, if you're not finding a purpose that, that, that comes from a, a, a place of your own identity, then, then you're going through the motions. And when you get tired and frustrated, because that will happen, um, you know, my fear is that you won't make it. But if I, I tell you and, and that you're doing this for your family and you're doing this for our culture, then it becomes a, a whole nother thing. You know, uh, it becomes a whole nother thing because you'll do anything for them. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave it at, at that uh, and then maybe open it up for a conversation. I, I don't know after how long do, do we have. Um, I, I, ha I definitely have a lot more to say, but I, I want to leave time for a question and answer. Thank you so much. We have another 20 minutes. Okay. So if you want to speak a little more, you want to open up for some questions. I'm yeah, I'd, I'd love to open it up for questions. Uh, you know, I also... Um, you know, when thinking about perspective and one of the things I did in, in, um, in college, I did a senior thesis uh, exercise. I was a history major and there was an option to do a senior th uh, thesis. And so I, um, I wanted to do this thesis on, you know, this whole uh, fracture between what I wanted to do and what my mom wanted me to do. And in, in terms of uh, going to you know the Naval Academy and it's like why did you make that decision and like I really learned a lot I learned a lot in that process um, that again this this is you know I, I it, the first thing I learned is that you know UCLA is very rigid because I tried to do this project with um, Professor Durante Alessandro Durante who was who was in the linguistics department I, I wanted to do it with him because he did all his research in Samoa and he, he, he knows the culture and language and he was a pretty cool guy. Um, and, you know, but, you know, obviously this was like the early nineties, no other Pacific Islanders, Keith wasn't there, you know, other folks weren't there and we were kind of on our own, but they didn't let me. So I had to find, I found a friendly, you know, history prof who let me do it. And, and one of the things that, uh, that you realize and recognize early on is that there's no literature out there. There was no literature out there. For, for me to, to do this work. And so I used a lot of like um, uh, fiction, you know, Albert Went and, uh, you know, these these stories from our communities. And because there was so much knowledge and there was so much resonance you know, when I read it, um, but it, it was an interesting thing because and then one of the books that I read was uh, this book called uh, America Samoa by J.A.C. Gray. And he talked about this incident um, and, you know, when I talk about, you know, oh, it happened before I was born, like, this is how colonization happens. In, in Samoa, there was um, a case of uh, the skipjack tuna. Um, and in, in this particular village where this happened, uh, this particular type of fish was, was, was sacred or a sa. Or, so whenever you catch one, you, you're supposed to follow protocol. You know, you give it to the high chief of the village and they figure out how to you know, properly disseminate this fish. Well, this particular person decided that they weren't going to do that. They were just going to keep it for themselves and, you know, pass it out to their whatevers. And, you know, if, if you're a Pacific Islander, and I'm sure for all the other folks, one of the worst things you can be is, is when they call you Ayu, when they say you're a kaipo or you're, you're like uh, greedy, you know what I mean? Or, and in this case, you're greedy with food. And, you know, so it's like a, the ultimate taboo. And, you know, and so um, this person was, was, this was the this was the early 1900s uh, was punished by the, the high chief and the, the village council their house was burned down and they were sent away from the village and this man went to the US naval government who had just recently taken over the islands and, and, and asked for recourse and they came back to the village and they made 
uh, this chief, you know, reinstall this person. And, you know, on the surface, right, like, it's pretty fucked up, you know, to do for a fish, right? I mean, it's like, <laughs> you burn my man's house down, that's kind of fucked up. Um, but, you know, if you're thinking about, it, like, it's, it's the ability to govern, it's ability to, to, to make, make sense of the life uh, of, of your society, right? So, so what's also there, right? It's just, what happens if people become too greedy, if we don't care for one another, if we just take things and just keep it for ourselves? What happens to our society then, right? And so uh, the US Navy and, and, and Westerners are not thinking that we have enough knowledge to, to make rules that preserve life, that preserve culture, right? To them, it's a fish. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, my mind's like, oh shit, that's crazy, you know, because I talk about it all the time. But when when you then when you are no longer committing your 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 belief in this structure that is it predates Christianity, that predates uh, imperialism, the Fasa Mo in this sense, in this case, if you no longer have faith in that and you think, well, it doesn't matter because I can always go here and do this, then you're no longer gonna believe in who you are. You're no longer going to believe that your wisdom and that the wisdom of your elders has any, any, any relevance in your life. You know what I mean? You're just going to participate or not, right? But if you if you believe with it in your whole heart that your ancestors made the best choices based on the wisdom of, of generations, and 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 you give yourself to that, then you're going to be able to follow. You're going to help. You're going to be able to decolonize. You know all the things you've been told. And all, all the experiences you had, and so it's an, it's an interesting thing, it was, and, and that's what I learned, you know, d- doing this this project, this senior project. And I, I, I go back to the earlier point about providing context and reflection, right? So what do you what do you think you know that I mean, you know, you don't really know, you know what I mean? And and how can you spend this time being useful in, you know? in very therapeutic type of ways, you know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we have some time for questions. And um, if you want to put your questions in the chat, we can read them out. If you prefer to just uh, say them, please do so. I think it's more personal if you say them. Um, So I'll wait for a minute, see if somebody wants to unmute and say something. Alfred, I saw you, Thomas guy. <laughs> yeah, when I worked when I worked in admissions, they told us we should buy a Thomas guy so we oh. could figure out where. That's how I know to get around all over LA now because I use that right. time to find my way. Y'all don't know, man. I, I'm that Thomas guy too, and yeah, it was like man. worn out, right. worn out. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask. Let me answer. Uh, ask this question here in the chat. How do you deal with all the racist institutions that insist in re- replicating the same power structures, even in programs, for those who have and continue to be oppressed by those systems of power? Mm. <clears throat> um, I so I, I lead this place, this office called the um, the Draper Center for Com- uh, for Community Partnerships, and and. Um, and I, I'm talking a lot, and this is this is an idea or, or, or a thing that I said to students all the time that college is an amazing, um, it's uh, an amazing time to to get to know who you are, to try things out. You know, it's it's practice, but you know, in, in many ways has real life implications, right? So you do a little bit of this, you go to this protest, or you participate in like spoken word, even though you really don't know how to write poetry (laughs) you start feeling yourself because everybody is overly affirming in college and they're like they don't want to tell you it's whack but um uh but you know you you just kind of try everything out and then hopefully by the time you graduate you realize what your instrument is you you realize what it is you're meant to do you realize that you know um like for me and alfred and santi we're educators you know we're, we're about creating access to college, you know what I mean? That's the instrument we play. And in, in, in the symphony of social justice, we have other people who play other instruments. They play, you know, artists, they play school teachers, or they play entrepreneurs, or they play all these other other instruments. And I'm not meant to do that. 
because you know as much as I love music and spoken word I've tried a few times I'm like <laughs> that shit was booty you know and, and um, <laughs> but I do this this I, this is how I get down you know what I mean and a lot of people say oh why you, you know you speak like I said because I'm I, I feel like I'm in my purpose you know what I mean I feel like this is where I'm meant to be you know this is my instrument I'm playing it for you you know what I mean and so um, when you when you use college to figure out what your instrument is, you know what it is you're meant to be, and and how you can weave together your professional goals and aspirations with your community obligations, your family obligations, then you find you don't find all solutions to. Every, I mean, because you know it's not your job to find solutions to every single institution, right? And and it could be maddening uh, if you if you choose to take that on. What you do is you kind of stay in your lane, you play your instrument, you play loud, and you play it often, and hopefully people catch it, and people are inspired by it, and they can inspire change, they can inspire other things. And so I, 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 I say that in part also because there's, it's not like, a, um, it's not like a, a math equation. You know, racism and racist institutions is not like a math equation where once you find the solution, it's over. It's not over. That shit evolves too. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, they would just tell you this shit to your face. Nowadays, they, it's it's in it's ingrained. It's in microaggressions. It's in you know subtleties and things like that. So it's not like the the other side doesn't evolve too. You know what I mean? So even though you're getting your game up, uh, you know you're playing your instrument really well. Other people are playing their shit too. The crazy thing about it is that those people that that are are are, are destructive that are that are, you know, have, have really kind of done a, a number with humanity and society currently and in history, they've all come from uh, great institutions of higher learning. You know what I mean? They come from the, the Ivy League schools or I think Trump, you know, bought his way into UPenn or somewhere like that. And the other Bush was going, went to Yale. And so the, the, the amazing sort of thing to get your mind around is like when you sit sit there at graduation some of y'all are, are, are on the side of good and some of you are some of those people you graduate are going to be fucking society up and so it's it's a it's an amazing dynamic to to think like damn these people you know and so it's important for for us to to sing louder for us to continue to move outside our spaces and and and, and be a, a, a because you need to get to those people before they they let their their machinations kind of take over the world, you know what I mean? Before they become so shitty that, you know, they they just you know are 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 no longer uh, seeing humanity in anyone else but themselves or their own people. That you know, I, I feel like at an elite liberal arts college where, where I work, I feel like you know what, these motherfuckers are gonna hear from me, you know what I mean? And then. One one day in the future they're gonna be like, yeah, I knew that dude Sefa, you know, and and hey, you know, I, I spit it at him like that, you know. You can go ahead and make all the money you want to, just don't be an asshole. How about that? Can we do that? <laughs> and and you laugh, but you know, it's kind of like it, hopefully it makes them pause and then, you know. And so I don't know if that answers your question, brother, um, but I, I feel like, you know, you can only do you, right? And and you can only keep playing, keep playing your instrument, keep going and, and, and have faith, especially in times like this when our faith has just been broken and shattered and continuously challenged, right? I mean, look, look at who we are. We're, we're indigenous people, man. They've been trying to kill us forever. And we still here, you know what I mean? And, and for our Pacific Islander folks, I know you're the smartest people because your people are navigators. And guess what? Your ancestors didn't fall out of the boat. They stayed on the boat. So. <laughs> I'm just playing. Just playing. Um, I got some other questions. Anyone else have any questions? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Anything. I see you. Should I start calling you out? Do it, Alfred. Hmm. Can How I about ask you all students? Um, how about one of our students, Phil or Jocelyn? Yeah. What's what? Okay, I hear so. There's one in here. It's like, what are some words of wisdom for a first time freshman? Um, find community. Um, find people. 
uh, especially at a place like UCLA, because you can feel isolated there. I mean, I, I think I went the first week without seeing another Pacific Islander. You know, I, I wore my ear, you know, I had my hair down. I was like trying to trying to flash like, yeah, what's that? Where are my people's at? And like the, the, the first person I met was in the financial aid office. <laughs> but back then you had to have to go there to get your checks you didn't you didn't get to like wire transfer nothing like you had to like be publicly shamed and stand in this long ass line remember those lines you know i mean like you know fucking like they were just doing that shit on purpose to, uh -huh. to okay. isolate out they were trying to isolate okay. trying to go around murphy hall around yeah. murphy hall it was it was the free cheese line you know what i mean and so they exactly. were they were like trying to expose us I'm like, yeah, hey, motherfuckers, whatever, you know. Um, but we got our money. That's yeah, that's where I saw my first uh other Polynesian. I was like, yo, what's up? And then that person's like, there's more people. And I'm like, really? Like, we're gonna have a barbecue. Of course you are. Let's have that barbecue, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's how I found my peoples. And you, you realize that, you know, and and I, I I run the college access program and I'm big on community whether it's, it's for social support, for moral support, or for academic support, because you, you, you have to be vulnerable with somebody like, you know, you'd be sitting in class and be like, yo, I didn't understand shit. You know what I mean? And you can't be saying that to everybody because you gotta, you know, you gotta put on the airs like you know what they're talking about. Um, but you know, some people you just gotta be like, yo, you know, one thing I used to do with that, uh, when I ran the Asian American Resource Center, one icebreaker question we had was like, what is the stinkiest food you like? You know what I mean? And everybody's like, oh, kimchi or this or that. And everybody's like, yeah, that, I love that. I love that. And it's like, but you can't, you know, we all know that in that question is also like years of like, people are like, yo, why does your food smell like that? You know what I mean? And so it's a safe space, right? Like if you can't say this shit to each other, or, you know, where no one's going to touch your hair or you know, ask you what your name means or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Or even if they do, it's like, you know, it comes from a good place. So you got to find community, you know, for, for a first year student. You got to find somebody to tell you, man, you all right. You know what I mean? Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. You know what I mean? Like finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. I mean, just keep swimming. You know, you don't have ups and downs and roundabout ways. And so find community, find community. And it doesn't have to just be one community you know if you find a community based on your faith that's great that's great if you find community based on your cultural background that's great too if you find community based on your subject interest that's cool too you know just find some people you could be real with you know what i mean you could let your hair down with because unlike being at home which is you know for for, for students of color first gen students uh, you don't realize how powerful it is or how restorative it is to go home at night you know, if, you, if you're out all day and you're trying to, to perform, you know, to, to good enough to get into college and good enough to impress some white folks, that takes a toll on you. When he went into high school. Uh -huh. um, you know, that takes a toll on you. And so when you, when you go home, you know, your, your parents, your grandparents, and everyone, your siblings are like, yo, man, you're the best we got. You know, you're awesome. You know what I mean? And they patch you up and then you're ready to go tomorrow. You know what I mean? But when you're off at college, there's no patching up, you know what I mean? Like it's constant performance 24 seven, you know what I mean? Like you're always performing, smiling for these motherfuckers, you know what I mean? So part of it is you gotta find people who to patch you up, to, to be real with you and just be like, yo, what the hell was that? You know what I mean? And just, just be peoples, you know? And so uh, that is so important. That is so important because the reason why you got to where you got to is because you had that. You had that community, you had that family, you had that culture. When you go to UCLA, sure, they give you squirrels and hummus and, you know, they give you, uh, you know, whatever they, you know, Skittles or whatever, you know, fun shit they give you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but they don't give you your what, what made you successful, right? None of that shit is, is at least not to me, you know, which is weird because now I have kids and they know what hummus is and. <laughs> They've seen squirrels. <laughs> they will never know the struggle, man. There's another question in there about how do you come above cultural isolation in the workplace? Um, I mean, I, for me, you know, I, I learned early on, like, you know, my appearance is, is who I am, you know, um, 
it was funny because uh, when I first got the job at UCLA and involved teaching, you know, I had long hair and you know, I've always had long hair. And uh, my mom was always be like, why don't you cut your hair, you know? And, you know, I know what she's getting at, right? The respectability and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, fuck these people. You know what I mean? It's me. You know, they're going to treat me this way anyway, you know, whether I got, I'm nice and cut up and, you know, what I, you know what I mean? And so I learned early on to just be myself. And, you know, ultimately, like, the things that I talk about, whether it's related to the, the how I teach, you know, these students who are not Pacific Islander, about the power in community, about loving eyes, about, you know, um, you know, or, uh, you know, or, you know, or, you know, you, 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 these are Polynesian things, these are Pacific things, these are my things, these are cultural things. I'm teaching any kid from any culture, you know, I'm telling this to anybody because I feel like they can learn from me, they can learn from us. So I don't know, a part of it is, you know, I feel, I, and this is of course me 25 something, 20, you know, plus years after, you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of my own whatever issues. Um, but it really is is that it's like I I can only um, be me, and then I've also been been you know somewhat blessed with a a sense of humor. You know I think it's from growing up the way I grew up, where people are always talking about your mother, and so you better know how to talk back, and you know what I mean. And so you know I'm I'm quick to snap on people and make fun of shit, and everyone starts laughing, and you know what I mean. And it is what it is, and you know. Uh, it's, it's uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I feel like um, you just got to be you. You can't be anyone else. Um, and, and, you know, I think as, as time goes, um, you know, I, I've, I got a staff now of, of uh, six professional staff and, you know, 30 students. And, you know, nobody else is Samoan. Actually, I do have a Samoan kid working for me, but they're learning from me. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and so, I think if you're in there long enough and you, you stick with it long enough that you become that change, you become the person who creates the culture within a certain space that has culturally not been that way before. Thank you very much. It has been inspirational. It's been real. It has been Sefa. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, my brother, anytime. And we do appreciate you spending the time here with us. I appreciate it. Us. We appreciate you. I appreciate it. I needed this so much. I mean, you don't know. I mean, I just, you know, things going on in the world and things going on. Just thank you. Thank you for the invitation, Brother Alfred. And, and, and thank you all for being here and allowing me to share my story. Hopefully it was it was something that could be useful to you all. And I'm, I'm reachable. Um, Brother Alfred knows how to get a hold of me or, a lot of folks on here know how to get a hold of me. Uh, so just please, you know, feel free to reach out. Thank you again, Sefa. Be it's well. Good. All right, uh, y'all. Thank you so much. One quick, uh, one quick comment. I think as we're wrapping up, you know, um, as a former MPI. Uh, oh, sorry. This is Donnie uh, Salcido. Um, so um, Seven knows me pretty well. Um, we've had great conversations and, um, you know, coming into UCLA before I was a student, um, I got to do an opening blessing for um, um, the CPO and Sefa was one of the speakers at the time uh, in CPO and um, I was sitting with um, Dr. Um, Teresa Ambo, um, just regular Teresa Stewart at the time. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, she was like, "You could come to UCLA, and you could you could be like him one day." Oh. And I laughed, and I was like, "All right, well, maybe one day." You and, can, then, uh, and then I went into MPI, and you were one of our speakers at MPI, and I was like, "Yeah, I could be here one day. One day I could be here." And this year, I graduated, and um, you know, you know, working, and and um, you know, came full circle. So, you know, we, we don't, you know, we, we play our, we go the path that our creator puts in front of us. And I always appreciate um, my creator putting you in my path. And Thank so I you. appreciate that, you know, um, as, you know, we go forward and um, we move forward. So um, we just never know um, who's going to be in our path um, and who's going to be there constantly. And, and you've been a really big constant 
um, in my educational walk, um, even though we don't we don't connect all the time like that. Uh, but when we do, it's really important. So I really appreciate you for that and appreciate you being here for um, this next generation. There's other, more students coming through. So, um, you know, just know for all of you MPI students coming through, like, you know, I remember seeing where in your seats uh, in, and sitting not even in community college at the time when I first met Safa to know that that's where I could be and that's where I can move um, and to see mountains move that way. So I really appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Oh man, thank you so much. You have no idea how much that means. Um, thank you guys. Thank you everyone on here for, for making the time and, and uh, thank you. Dr. Ambo. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Teresa, what's up? <laughs> Hi, <Sophie>. so Professor. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put me on the spot for what? I just wanted you to say hi, hear your voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. All, well, in this, all in the struggle. I'm sure we'll, we'll run into each other in other places. So yeah, always. <laughs> always. Um, before you leave, I think I'm going to change the order up if it's okay, Donnie and Shannon. And actually, I don't know if you know Shannon and Ma'i. Um, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, if it's okay with you, I think maybe it would be appropriate for Donnie to do a bless the blessing he was going to do at the mm -hmm. end. But while Sefa is with us, if Thank that's you. okay. Yeah. Donnie, does that work for you? That works. So, um, well, um, we'll wrap this up in this way. Um, and what a great way to um, wrap up. You know, we opened um, with blessings. Um, and, you know, um, it's just um, like I, I keep saying, you know, it's a great, you know, um, that white um, Western way is linear. You know, it's one way, it's one direction. But our traditional ways and our indigenous ways, they're circular. You know, we we go through this um, pattern and, and we go through this circle, this life, this life circle, and we keep interacting with people and um, and moving through. And so um, this, even your academic is is your journey is is circular. So um, you know, just being a part of this circle, just being a part of this this group is um, really great. So. Um, I just want to, um, again, thank all of you students that um, joined us, all the staff, full-time staff um, that joined us, um, that are, were able to be a part of MPI. Sometimes our full-time staff are um, really busy and can't be a part of MPI um, because we're running several different programs at the same time. And so this is the blessing of, of COVID, I guess, this year. Um, is that we're all able to be a part of, of this and we're able to reach um, further than LA County and Riverside County. We're able to, to reach um, the nations through this um, platform. So, um, so this is really great. So we'll go ahead and um, to um, start out our, 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 our closing and then um, we'll have a closing song and then um, and, and whatnot. So um, good afternoon, creator. Uh, it's me again, it's me, Squiggy. And I just wanna thank you so much for um, coming down and being with us, Creator. You just, you came down and you you walked with us these past few days. And thank you so much for all of our families. Thank you for, for, um, for um, just bringing us together, just the, the blessings that we have. Thank you for Senna and her mom and her dad who are still with us and were able to open us up in blessings, to open us up in that traditional way um, and, and bring us um, bring us in that way. We thank you for Lydia who um, continued to show her heart work and continue to show um, the work and the things that she's done. Um, past UCLA. We thank you so much for the Streamer family um, sitting there in um, Los Coyotes um, Indian Reservation, way out there in San Diego County, just um, one of the smallest communities, but had the biggest impact um, in a lot of our lives. And she sent, you know, no internet service, no computers, but she managed to send all three of her kids to UCLA. And so we're just thankful for, for that family. Creator, thankful for, um, um, Alice Lincoln Cook this morning, um, just talking about the work that she's doing um, here with within with baskets and with other materials, 
working with um, forestry departments and fire departments on traditional burns and what it is to preserve land. And then <clears throat> we thank you so much for um, Sefa, who's who's continued to to um, bear the light in darkness, always just bringing that light, bringing that realness into academics, bringing us in. Um, when we see him be real in a space um, of higher education, he just knows that he's paving the way for us to walk into those spaces. We just thank you. And, and it's, you know, academics, creators, is so lonely. We know it's so lonely. Sometimes we're the only ones in our classroom. Sometimes we're the only ones um, you know, in our offices that are coming from our communities, we're the only ones um, that are in those spaces. And, and to always be alone, um, it feels really hard, but, you know, to know that you've been with us, Creator, the whole time, carrying us, lifting us, and walking us through. Um, we, we appreciate you, and we thank you, Creator, for all of this. We thank you for the full-time staff, and we thank you for um, Alfred and his vision. Um, thank you for all the students that are coming through um, um, higher ed on this new platform of Zoom and Zoom learning and um, visual learning as we move forward. Make that easier on us, Creator, as we come in um, to these spaces. But um, Creator, we just thank you for, for all of these things. Um, So uh, we'll have a song and the song that um, talks about uh, moving forward. Um, our creator told, told us um, that he was gonna go on to a different place, but we couldn't stop, we had to move forward. And so um, sometimes um, that's a difficult thing is to move forward um, when everything else sometimes seems to stop. And, um, and yeah, so this song is, is for that. So. Um, Asuma sua mi avan tamaka tuma sua sua mi uvan Asuma sua sua awa mi uvan do iti wem Asuma sua mi avan tamaka tuma sua sua mi uvan Asuma sua sua awa mi uvan do iti wem and they are dormithy when they are dormithy when me lie me. Are you and I who lie and I who hear with Andor? Are they at whom so well me who and dormithy when a tomb so well me have and tamaka tomb so well so well me who and a tomb so well so well our me who and dormithy when are they at dormithy when mother. So, um, so that's um, the end of our program. That's going to be the end of our, our blessing. Um, and, you know, no matter where we are, you know, we have to move forward. Um, we have to um, go through um, wherever our creator is gonna take us um, in our higher education journey. Thank you so much, um, Sefa, for um, being here through my journey personally. Thank you for being here for um, our program and our students. Um, it's just been a blessing, um, you know, to, to, to have you here. And, um, you know, for me, it was very difficult. You know, I moved recently from, from home, from LA, and um, moved up to Northern California, to, you know, to do some work and to leave home, you know, I know what that's like, you know, to, to be in a different space. And so, um, but we all move and we all move in those spaces. So I appreciate all of you. Um, and um, yeah, so I think we have some raffles now and we could move next <laughs> wherever you need Alfred and we'll, we'll yeah. move. <laughs> I have to take off, but I just want to say thank you and thank you for letting me be part of that blessing. Donnie, I love you, my brother. Um, just thank you to everybody. Good luck on your journey. I'm here. Hit me up, please. It, it's a real open invitation uh, if you ever need me. Thank you, Sefa. All right, y'all. See you, brother. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Shannon. I think we have the uh, um, raffle and then the, make sure the evaluation. Thank you again. Yes, hi everyone.
Thank you for attending this session and for any of the sessions that you attend previously. Um, if I could have Ashley share her screen with the raffle um, things. And yeah, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Go ahead and press it. <laughs> Who's going to be winner number one for our UCLA Care Package raffle? Victor, wow, awesome. <laughs> Yes, Victor. <laughs> Victor, we will be in contact and get your mailing address. I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's two more actually. We're giving it away to three people. So we'll test your luck next. Come on, cross your fingers. Who's gonna be the next winner, winner, chicken dinner? Um Wow, I don't know how to say this name properly. Kolini Usi Rasmau. I believe you're a counselor from Miracosa. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, Thank that you. is. Wow. I rarely win anything, so that's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I won a lot just being in all these sessions. Awesome, awesome webinar these past two days. So thank you. I go by uh, Kaylee, and I'm also a rugby coach, so I go by Coach Kaylee. Oh, um, awesome. I, I meet everybody and it was awesome. And um, a lot of my uh, counseling 100 students uh, were in the uh, first session today uh, because it was during the same time. So it was, uh, I made having them do a reflection on, on, the, on their, on their uh, time in this. So thank you very much for everybody. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, just tuning in. And we hope to make a stronger partnership with Miracosta in the future. So we will be in yes. contact. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Prize number three. Let's see. Cross your fingers. Is it so close? Say congratulations. Woo. Teresa was this close. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone for participating um we will reach out to you to get your mailing addresses and um yeah just thank you so much again for being here um if we could have our last slide go up for our evaluation um and for our acknowledgement of california indian day I'll pass that over to Donnie, actually. Take it away. <laughs> uh, again, again, um, I know you're um, probably tired of my voice. I am. Um, so um, again, thank you all for being here today, um, this week, today, and tomorrow. We're celebrating all week, um, California Indian Day. I'm just thankful um, to be a California native, um, native in a beautiful space. Um, Thank you. So thankful to be urban native as well, um, just to be native in general. Um, so celebrate that with us. That's a great day to be um, native and it's even a greater day to be indigenous on native lands. So um, celebrate us, celebrate with us, all of you, beautiful um, Pacific Island people um, and um, be excited to be here with us. Um, we welcome you and we're excited for California Indian Day. Um, I think I'll spend the day tomorrow um, looking for those California Indian Day deals um, at the stores, um, <laughs> um, shopping for used cars. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thank you all of all of you. Yeah, and so we, we will insert insert there it is our evaluation link it's in the chat if you want to just give us a quick evaluation of the sessions today and yesterday um so we can improve for our future uh internet events um and i guess i'll give my closing statement uh so just thank you thank you all for being here thank you to our staff um thank you to our um ancestors who are joining us in, through spirit for guiding us to put this webinar together um and i guess if uh any students want to leave with something some key advice for me i would just say uh, make sure to to make that community for yourself if if you don't already have it i remember my first day working um at ucla i seen donnie and our friend ec and i just went over there and i basically said like hey i'm samoan let me in your club you know like 
and they just instantly took me in like the next day um Donnie was calling me sis but I think it's because he forgot my name but either way you know it was just an instant embrace and an instant support and <laughs> and we need that so um that's just what I would encourage you all to take away um, from this okay wait one last thing is um to just keep us together and keep sticking together um Donnie and I as uh coordinators have the opportunity to do this event separately um one day for Native Americans and one day for Pacific Islanders but um I don't know just that that instant connection like I was saying just we knew we had to be together. <laughs> we are one, as we usually say, you know, when he's feel sick, I feel sick. When he's tired, I'm tired. We're, we're, we're just a one indigenous body. And um, I think that as faculty and as students, we just need to remember that we have each other to lean on. So stick together and build that community. Thank you. <laughs> stick together and it's um, bittersweet. It's me and Shannon's last, um, last year's students and last year as MPI coordinators. So, um, you know, um, it's really, really um, bittersweet um, for us. UCLA and MPI have been such a instrumental um, part of our journey. And um, MPI has really changed our families. It's changed our generations. Um, it's changed the it's changed our wealth. It's changed our, our the way we were placed in society. Um, it's changing the generations of our personal families. Um, you know, we're Bruins. We're Bruins, bitch. Um, <laughs> and um, we're you know we're out and we're we're done. And so um, you know we're we're going to go on to the next part of our lives. And um, and we're we're really blessed to have each other and to have. Um, family like CCCP um, to be to be in, um, um, you know, to always come up to that second floor and have snacks and to, to have each other to, to rely on and to rest on and to share things with. So we really appreciate all of you and all of you full-time staff that have just been there um, for us and been there for our program. Thank you so much for caring about our community, you know, um, to have this much love for a community that's less than 1% um, and at that, at that school, you know, and to put this much effort into such a small community, um, you know, says so much. So thank you for caring about the, the less than 1% um, because, you know, we don't, we don't get a lot of people that care and, and push us forward. So thank all of you for um, caring about our community and, and loving our community um, and praying for our community as we go forward. So we come to the end, bittersweet. It has been a beautiful two days. We are thankful um, for all of the work and effort that everyone put into this. And for those of you who are still here, thank you for attending. Um, we look forward to our next um, event. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, we will be thinking about other ways to help the community. So if you have suggestions and ideas, put them in uh, your evaluation, send us an email, harass Donnie or Shannon, even though they're not gonna be working, they're gonna be connected because our motto is one CCP, always CCP. So um, we just thank you for being part of this community. And I don't know if any of their staff wanna say anything. Or Dr. I always, so, so I wanna let other people talk first. So. Well, I just, I'm just gonna go out just, um, Shannon, um, I know you, I remember you saying that speaking in front of people was not your thing but you do it so well. Um, you're just, wow. You, um, just like beyond, I mean, I have nothing to be proud about because I haven't done anything. You done it and it's just so, it's just so great to see you take on that role. It's so amazing to take on that, see you take on that role. Um, 
and Donnie, your your painful hilarity. I mean, just like just wow, just like there are truths in there though, and and but it sure hurt. You make them funny, and at the same time, they hurt at the same time. I don't know how you do that, but that's that's a gift. Um, and of course, um, my e, your energy is just like wow, it's, it's, it's just outstanding. And I think the combination of, of the three of you, and another were other people involved as well. I mean, definitely, of course, but the combination of your of your of your student experience um, just made this really. I mean, for me, I. I don't get to be around in PI a lot because I'm running always around. Uh, so I don't know if this is just how it is all the time. Maybe it is. Um, but wow, my heart is full. Thank you. Thank you for, for this gift. I appreciate it. I guess I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I don't know if any student wants to go, but um, I just want to say thank you all so much for uh, sharing space. And it was an amazing uh, two day webinar. Uh, and I enjoy every single bit of it. And like I said earlier, it was a learning experience. I know, you know, we just talk, but well, we used to talk in the office whenever you drop by, but just being in the space to learn and um, being in community was very important for, like I said, during these times, you know, we need that, we need that community more than ever. And so if I, even though we were connected through a laptop or a computer, it felt like we were there in spirit, like all together. So I was, I just wanna say thank you and, I'm gonna miss y'all, uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't get to see each other anymore. That just means that you're moving on to, your, to the next chapter, whatever that chapter may be. And I'm just glad that our paths crossed and now everyone who you know is part of this call, hopefully you can stay connected and we can be part of that bigger community. Um, so we're here for you and here for everyone. And thank you for everyone who you know, contributed to the, the webinar and also contributed to, you know, just being here. Your, your presence means a lot. So thank you all and major love to everyone. Okay, well. I was gonna say we're still live on YouTube. Go ahead. Oh, we're not I'm not going to cry on YouTube. <laughs> oh. You want me to stop it? Sure. Okay. I just want to um, echo what everyone has mentioned. Um, 